Hi friends, it's Monica again, and today I'm going to be doing my May TBR. So I do usually make these TBRs or to be read uh, lists monthly, but I tend to be a mood reader, so it does change throughout the month. So let's see how I will stick to this list that I made for this month. And the majority of the books on this list are by Asian authors for the Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month or AAPI. So these books are ordered from 2021 releases to the older releases because I want to share newer books that I've been really anticipating and really excited to get to. So let's just jump right into it. So the first one is a historical fiction book and it's actually based on Titanic. It's Luck of the Titanic by Stacey Lee and this one was actually recently published on this past Tuesday, uh, May 4th. I am filming this on Tuesday but uploading it on another day. So anyways, this author, I did read one other book from her, The Downster Girl, and I really really love that one. It has Asian representation in historical fiction so with Luck of the Titanic, I really wanted to see how um, Stacey Lee would put a spin onto that story. So Luck of the Titanic is actually loosely based around the story of six survivors of Chinese descent that is not really spoken about in historical accounts. Well from my experience in like from just normal high school history classes like I don't really remember the mentioning of these Asian survivors so I think that's another plus for this book and its premise for me. So in 1912, we are following twins who are British Chinese and their names are Valora and Jamie Luck. So Valora and Jamie, they are actually have been separated for around two years after the death of their parents and Valora has managed to talk her way onto the Titanic and kind of advocate for herself and her twin to become a part of a traveling circus. And while aboard the ship, she does manage to find her brother and and this is where the discussion of different wealth classes come into play, how first class passengers versus third class laborers, where is where Valora finds her brother Jamie to be at. Valora actually does manage to have first class accommodations through her and all this comes to a literal breaking point when the Titanic hits the iceberg and now they are trying to basically fight for their survival upon the ship. I think this one will have a lot of discussion about uh, classes, discrimination, and of course the high stakes drama part with the Titanic sinking. And I really cannot wait to get to this one. So I did want to include one LGBT plus book this month because of June coming up and I just wanted to have some more diversity in this TBR. And I did decide on a contemporary, it's um, Hanny and Issues Guide to Fake Dating by Adiba J. Jidar. I'm sorry about butchering names again. So this one is set in a high school centered around two Bengali girls, Hanny and Issue. Hanny is one of the more popular girls in the school and she comes out as bisexual, but then her friends invalidate her as being bi because from that point on she has only dated guys. So kind of in a panic, Hani says that she is in a relationship with Issue and Issue is the complete opposite. While Hani is part of the most popular group in school and Issue is just a really top academic achiever and she is striving to do whatever it takes to be in the best college possible. So that's where the fake dating concept comes into play. They make an agreement to continue this fake relationship and, and they eventually do develop feelings for one another. But given cultural expectation, there are some people in Hanu and Issue's lives that will do anything to stop their budding relationship. So this one does speak of a coming of age story with themes of discovering your identity and, and overcoming personal challenges. So I think this one will be a really nice addition to my TBR. So this next one is a YA fantasy that actually caught my eye because of its gorgeous cover. It's Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. And Elizabeth Lim has written the Spin the Dawn duology, which I have yet to read. I'm so behind on my TBR pile. Impossible to keep up, but I'm trying my best. So this one is centered around Shiori, the Princess of Kiata. She holds a secret that can get her killed. 
She carries forbidden magic within her blood. And on the morning of Shiri's wedding day, she loses control of her magic. And that does put a halt to the wedding ceremony. Her stepmother, Rekama, notices um, Shiori's powers and her stepmother also has some powers of her own. Shiori's stepmother banishes her from the kingdom, turns her brothers into cranes, and threatens Shiori to never speak a word of this to anyone, which essentially makes her into a mute or else her stepmother will kill her brothers off one by one. From there, Shiori is navigating a world full of conspiracies and she's unable to tell fact from fiction. She must team up with her previously left behind betrothed to help find her brothers and also to accept the magic that she carries and defeat the evil stepmother. <laughs> this one sounds really good, really fast-paced and action-packed. I'm really excited to get to this one and even though it does release in July, I do have an e-arc of this one just to be transparent. And now that I think about it, um, usually my <laughs> monthly TBRs are just fantasy books but this month I'm actually trying to branch out and read more books other than fantasy. And this next book I chose to read this month is a contemporary. It's Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. So we are following two characters. First, Penny Lee, who has just finished high school. Nothing significant has ever happened during her high school years. And now she's moving to Austin, Texas for college and majoring in creative writing. And there, Penny finally hopes that she can move on from her past and have a more exciting future. And we also follow Sam, who is, I assume, living in Austin, Texas and he's living and working in a cafe with the dreams of becoming a movie director. But he's penniless and just lost right now. And these two characters, they meet in a really awkward, not meet cute way. And they exchange phone numbers. They begin to text really often. And through those text messages, they develop a relationship. And ultimately, they become closer throughout that conversations that they have over text. And I did recently read Yoke by the same author, Mary H.K. Choi. Um, I did think Yoke was really realistic, contemporary, and I think this one is also following the same lines of discussing hard topics in life, especially during transitional periods, such as moving to a whole new uh, city, and starting college. So I had this one sitting on my shelf for well over a year now and I think it's time for me to read it. So these next two books I didn't manage to read in April and they were part of my April TBR but I just didn't have enough time and I didn't really get around to them. So it's the Six of Crows duology with Crooked Kingdom. I'm just gonna hold up Six of Crows. So my plan was to reread the entire uh, Grisha trilogy, Six of Crows duology, King of Scars duology as well all in the month of April or preferably just before Shadow and Bone coming out but that didn't happen so I'm dividing them up into May and June but for this month I do plan to reread Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom and if you're not sure what Six of Crows is specifically about I'll give you a brief description. Six of Crows takes place in Ketterdam which is an island of trade but it's also filled with criminals gamblers and sinners. We are following six different characters, so there are six point of views. There is a gang leader, a spy, a runaway noble, a sharpshooter, a thief, and a heart render. And a heart render is a Grisha, and a Grisha is a person who has magical abilities, and a heart render specifically can control people's internal organs, so they're quite powerful. So I would say the main character in this book is the gang leader, Kaz Brecker. Kaz is offered a high stakes job, to complete a heist that will pretty much set him up for the rest of his life and he needs to find the perfect crew for this heist. I remember really liked this duology more than the Grisha trilogy because I think I just connected more with the characters and it's more faster paced so I really can't wait to reread this because it's it has been a while since I last read it. Also, I am planning a video on the Shadow and Bone Netflix show comparing like the books to the show and just my own personal thoughts on it. So I will get that video out as soon as I can. So that's my TBR for the month of May and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and remember to subscribe and give me a big thumbs up and hit that notification bell to not miss any future updates and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!